don't forget this video was brought to you by the spiritualalchemist.com for more information you can visit www.thespiritualalchemist.com and we also have a chat box if you want all right we're live once again today we have a special guest a very special young lady that's gonna come and speak to us about what we like spiritual talk um if our practitioner is sheshe voodoo priestess and of course uh paulo mayombe practitioner as well and i'm gonna go ahead and let her take over the uh, camera and let her introduce herself and I'm going to get my questions ready to get all the yummy things out, all the gossip out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you, uh, have you introduce yourself, because I know you have so many titles, and I'm gonna, I don't want to get tongue twisted. <laughs> oh, there's rumors, huh? <laughs> A lot of juicy stuff. <laughs> juicy stuff. I look forward to hearing about it. So I am Mambo Iyaya Shaliwa. Aborishade Awaronki, amongst some other names. Um, I am first initiated to Ifa and also as well as um, Palamayambe um, and in Brahma Kambrahma, as well as um, initiated um, in Voodoo by way of um, Haiti. Hmm. So, and I I'm a spiritual practitioner. I've been, before I got involved in initiation and traditional religion, African traditional religion, I was always a spiritual worker. I've always been a medium, um, spiritualist, um, um, seeing and, you know, spirits, always been connected to spirits since I was a child. So it always came natural. Well, that's but nice. Look I at did you. get into this walk. So, you know, it's part of my, my family. My family, you know, it's a whole group of psychics, seers people that can see spirits, prophets, all that stuff. So I never felt weird and out of place, which a lot of people do when they are born into a family and they're the only ones like that. But I always felt like I was in place where I was supposed to be. So I was fortunate. Now, you, you mentioned Brahma Kum Brahma. I, I didn't know you were Brahma Kum Brahma. Or oh, unless you told me and it just slipped my mind. Um, I don't think I, I, I talked about it. Yeah, I'm like, wait, Brahma Kum Brahma. Did you say Brahma Kum Brahma? Um, who's your godmother? Oh, and godfather. My godfather is William Cartagena. He's actually in Orlando. He's oh. Cuban. He's Cuban. Um, so I'm in I'm in Tampa. So he's about a, a little over an hour away from me where I am. Okay, look at that. Another Brahma Kum Brahma sister. I didn't know that. That's where it's I, at. I, I would have brought you uh, here sooner. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> you, you, we spoke, um, and you mentioned something about uh, Isheshe. Yeah, uh, you you are in that uh, tradition as well. Yes, you know it's funny how how Isheshe came about. So, do you want me to tell you how that came about? Well, first of all, let's get into the juicy thing that everybody likes, and that is um, how did you get this calling? to come into this uh, beautiful practice. How, how? Apollo? Well, where did you start first? Um, first, I was initiated in Ifa. Then okay. I was initiated into Apollo, and then I was initiated recently into Voodoo. Although my ancestors wanted me to do Voodoo first, it didn't work out that way. Hmm. Okay. But um, the thing is, I, I, you say you were first initiated, but how did you receive the calling? What brought you there? You know, what is what is so funny is I've always known that there was a calling for me to work in the um, aspect of being a spiritual person because I've always been that person. I've always been the person that could see and give people um, advice and insight into spirits, into the spiritual realm. So I've always been that person, that go-to person. So I always knew that I had a walk with spirit. And it's funny because back in the day, I wanted to be a nun. <laughs> but I think that was just my connection. <laughs> that was just my connection to God. I would never survive as a nun. I they, I go straight to hell. <laughs> but so I always knew that I had a calling in the, the line of priesthood. So um, the way that Ifa came about, I knew, you know, I knew about Paulo, I knew about Voodoo, but honestly, 
when this came about, I knew nothing about Ifa. I knew nothing about Orisha, nothing about Isheshe, Lukumi, Santeria, none of that. So the way that Ifa came to me is I was in my room at night and this was God, God, well over maybe like eight years ago, 10 years ago, something like that. And I was sleeping and I kept hearing the name Obatala over and over and over again. I was half awake, you know, you're in the in-between place and I was half awake and I kept hearing that. And I was like, who is that? I was like, why am I hearing this name? I had no idea, no idea who Obatala was. So I reached out to an Apollo friend of mine, a Padrino, and I said, hey, who is this person? I couldn't even pronounce it properly. <laughs> so he was like, oh, you're talking about Obatala. He's an Orisha. I was like, what's an Orisha? And he said, oh, he's an Orisha in Ifa. So I was like, okay, like, why is he coming here announcing himself to me and, and, and telling me his name while I'm in my room sleeping, right? So that happened. So I was like, oh, I didn't really, I did a little research, but I didn't really say, oh, you know, that's my calling, that's my path um, until maybe a, uh, maybe a couple of years later, a few years later, where there were some um, spiritual dynamics coming on and I ended up going to an egg bay festival um, for someone. And the fact that I was there, woke up my egg bay. And my egg bay, are who are our heavenly mates, for those people who don't know, our family that's from heaven in the room. Mm -hmm. So something happened and they were like, why is she there? We have not heard anything from her. Why is she there? <laughs> so at a whole festival, not paying us any attention. So I started to feel really strange. My head started, I just started having these dreams and just things started happening. So I knew a few people, um, this lady that was a priest um, that I had connected with on Facebook. And I reached out to her and she said, hey, um, I said, something's going on with me. I said, can you give me some insight? And she told me about my egg bay. So I was like, well, um, let me try to 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 get uh, a reading with somebody. So I got a reading, and when I got the reading, it was telling me that hey, this is your path. You do need to go into into Ifa. Of course, I still had no idea what Ifa was, who Ifa was, know nothing about Arisha or Rumila. Yes, I was clueless. So she says, hey, we're gonna have this medicine making retreat that we're going to. I know this Babalawo that is having it in Puerto Rico. She sent me the information. Um, I was like, she was like, would you like to come? I was like, of course, you know, I've always been a person that's always been a medicine maker. I've always made medicine. I've always been a conjure lady doing herb magic, doing herbs for, for healing, all those kind of things for God since I was 20. So I'm like, mm. I'm in my fifties. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the medicine making retreat and it was an Osain medicine making retreat. And that is where I met my Baba that actually took me to Nigeria for my initiation, my Baba that I'm with now. Mm. So, so that's how. Bind up everything, you know? Wow, look at you. Um, now, how was your, your calling into this uh, Mayombe uh, situation? Paolo, what did you think about Paolo when you first about it? Were you, were like, were you like, what in oh, the world is Paolo? Just like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Now, I will say, I never thought I would be in Palo because again, I knew about Palo and I was always drawn to the Prendas. I would always look at the Prendas and say, oh my God, they're so beautiful. I love them. I can feel the energy from the Prendas, you know, and with everything in there, the skulls, the blood, the bones, everything, it just called to me. Mm. So, but say maybe... Uh, let's say maybe back in 2010, I was in a, another spiritual group of people um, that did a lot of spiritual work in the community. Um, and so I was connected to a lot of people. They, they know me as Priestess Divine, right? So I was connected to that huge community there. And I met a Padrino, supposedly, that was supposed to do some work for me. And he ended up giving me a cursed item right hmm. so 
that was was, whole, was it like an Nkisi or Makuto? Or, or no, he actually it was actually uh you know the mojo bags. It was like something like that. Oh okay, Makuto. And it always it always felt like it was off. I said something's not right about this, right? And at the time, you know, I was going through my own process of trying to heal and get my mind right. So my mind was not like it is now, you know. <laughs> So I was in a state of anger. You know, when you're emotionally unbalanced in a state of anger, things like that, you just can't connect the way you should. Mm. So, and I was, I didn't listen. My spirits were talking to me, telling me things, and I was hard headed at the time. I'm a Taurus as well, so that does not help. And I'm a little bit fiery too, so that doesn't help at all. So I was like, I know what I'm doing, fine, right? So I get this item from him. It was a whole ordeal. He tricked the spirit, tricked me, and I had to go bury it. I couldn't burn it. I couldn't throw it away, or the spirit would have turned on me. And there was this other Padrino that I knew that helped me out. Um, um, his name was um, Eddie, Eddie Garcia. He's a great guy. He did a lot of things for me. He's not long, no longer with us, but he did some work for me in that situation. So I had more encounters besides that with um, a few Padrinos that um, were unethical. And they would either seek to entrap me, be with me, steal my energy, power, whatever the case may be. So that was my intro to Apollo. So no, I was never, even the even someone else that did some other things, they were like, oh, maybe you're supposed to be scratched on Apollo. I said, never. I said, no, I will never, ever be scratched on Apollo. Never. So <laughs> I already had a bad taste in my mouth for it already. So then it comes along. Were you the type of person, um, uh, were you the, the, like, you heard a lot of negativity, Apollo's evil, Apollo is, uh, will kill you, Apollo will drain you, that stuff, uh, uh, type of uh, talk. A lot of people are afraid of Apollo because they said Apollo's evil, Apollo is devilish, Apollo oh. will drain you, Apollo will kill you and all that stuff. No, not at all. You know, I, I love Apollo. You know, I loved it. It was so interesting because, you know, we deal with muertos, right? And I'm really being a, a medium and so connected to spirits of the dead is mm -hmm. that it always called to me. So I always like that, that possibility. I always like working with, working with spirits, working with the elements. And that always drew me to it. So I never had a negative outlook on Paulo whatsoever. I love the prenders. They look so beautiful to me, but I had these run-ins and then then I got the bad taste in my mouth. And then I was like, oh, all these people are evil. All these people are wicked. You know, all these people are after me. They, you know, trying to kill me, destroy my life, put me in pots. <laughs> and that was exactly what was happening. So I had a bad taste in my mouth. But fast mm. forward years later, I had a dream about an Nkisi. So, and then I, my Baba gave me a reading. He said, you're supposed to do something in Palo. You're supposed to receive something and have the ceremony in Palo. And I was like, hey, you know, I had a dream about an Nkisi. So I went out and I bought an Nkisi and I had my Nkisi for a while. We traveled all over the place. I took my Nkisi with me. This was before initiation to anything. I had my Nkisi. My Nkisi was like my road dog. We went everywhere, right? Puerto Rico. I moved here, moved there, everywhere. My Nkisi was with me. So one night I went to sleep and it had been about a year since I gotten that information in my reading that I needed to be scratched in Palo. So I go to sleep and I wake up and find something scratched me on my back. <laughs> oh, wow. So my mom was visiting at the time. I got it. I'm telling you, I got so many interesting stories. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> so it's something scratched me on my back. I woke up. I said, Mom, I was like, something scratched me on my back. And my first inclination was, oh, I was fighting something in my sleep, some type of spirit, right? Some evil trying to get at me. So I was like, take a picture. Let me see what it is. So she took a picture of the scratches. And they look like letters. And I didn't know what it was initially. But then I was looking at my Nkisi a couple of days later, and it was the same scratches that was on the head of my Nkisi that were on my back. It was exactly. Oh, wow. So I was like, okay, let me get this done. You know, they's like, I guess if I'm not going to get scratched, they were going to scratch me themselves. <laughs> oh, wow. So when you went when you went inside i always ask the people this thing and by the way it's not that i'm i'm actually looking at the screen that's why my my eyes look weird like i'm looking somewhere oh. else because the camera is this way but if i look this way i can't see the screen right <laughs> so i'm just letting the people i am paying attention i'm actually looking at you at the screen here um when you 
when in that um, in Ganga room? And it's a question I ask everybody. Um, the day of the initiation, how, how did you feel? Were you like shaking? Were you nervous? Were you like, what the heck is going on? First of all, they 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 they, they do what a lot of people do. I'm not criticizing them. I don't do this. They they put you in penitentia. That's when you go on your knees and you you there for hours and your knees hurt and stuff like that. No, 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 they did not. Um, but when I went there and actually my padrino, I got connected to my padrino by way of a a, a sister that she grew up in Lukumi, mm -hmm. right? She grew up in Lukumi and she knew him through working with him. So she connected me with my padrino. Um, he gave me my reading. He was like, yes, you're supposed, you have to get scratched, you know, based on the the, um, the letters that fell. He was like, you have to get scratched. I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> I figured that by now. So, mm. you know, we arrange it and we go. And, you know, I've always been so connected to spirit. Me walking in there, it was it was nothing. I was I was ready. I wasn't nervous. I was like, OK, spirit, let's do what we got to do. You know, I was like, let's let's do it. You know, I felt comfortable with him. I trusted him. You know, Ifa said it was okay. You know, Obatala, he didn't want to say it was okay at first, but he finally said it was okay. Mm. He told me no at first. Um, my aunt, my Egun said, you know, they said yes. Ifa said yes. So it was was him. So I got there, and I wasn't nervous um, because my Muerto was with me for one thing. Um, and you know, I had some ancestors scratched in Palo. Hey, salam alaikum, Tata Matamba. Can you send me a little bit of a Sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Greetings, Tata Matamba. Greetings. Hmm. And salam alaikum. So, um, so no, we go in there and I'm fine. I'm, I'm at peace. You know, my muertos with me, you know, there's certain things you can't see, but I could see it anyway. I could see everything that was going on um, that everyone was doing as part of the um, process of getting scratched. So I could see people here and what they were doing because um, that's what you know my spirit was showing me so and you're also a uh graphic designer i am I okay am. So, you know and that's I'm how i i met you because uh we both have a, a a friend in common that he was like hey you, you need to bring this one on you need to bring this one on uh which is tata matamba that's he's here with us okay. um and thanks to him i we got connected and here you are and you know now that i know that you are brahma con brahma i'm like okay cool you know it's brahma con brahma sister up in here um <laughs> well good thank you i'm happy to be here so thank you for inviting me by the way thank oh you. No, you're welcome you're welcome so you're the one that designed his new book um cover yes 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 i do i've, I've always loved art and you know obatala obatala's my head you know obatala's an artist a lot of people don't know that so obatala's an artist so i you know, my desire in the in the realm of art is, you know, everything must align spiritually, as I've been told. Everything I do and touch that's going to be blessed has to be in alignment with spiritual work, everything, or spirit will not bless it. They threaten me all the time, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I can do art. So my art really revolves around doing things related to um, uh, African religions, the for religions, you know, the religions that I walk in, or other ones as well, so that we can... Um, because I think that's something that's really missing. We don't have art. We don't have, you know, things that we can put in our shrine rooms, that we can put in, in our monansos, our ilays, that reflect, um, you know, the art of, of religion. Because, you know, especially African art is deeply rooted in, African religion is deeply rooted in art. And that's something that we are missing. So that is something that I want to, you know, do more of and um, be able to bring to life through spirit the things that 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 are there for art. And the way I came up with his book design, he was talking to me and I actually had a vision that came to my head about what the design was supposed to look like. And that's what I made when I made this book cover. Oh, good. Yeah, look at you. So, well, yeah. I haven't seen it yet because, you know, he doesn't share things with me anymore. You know? <laughs> He's holding you know, back. He Hold He's back. holding back, you know. So why, he, you, why are you holding back? <laughs> you know, he hasn't seen, before he was like, here's a book, you know. Somebody else got the first copy. I didn't get a first copy or anything like that. Oh, you know? no. He was like, oh, no, you got to pay for it this time. I, What's that? You know. That's how I'm <laughs> 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 mm. no, Well, anyways, 
But I do that too, you know, the art thing. I do the book covers. I do, I do um, clay, clay things. I, I make Congo shrines in, in, in the way Apollo. I do Congo shrines because everybody has a Congo spirit. And Obatala actually told me I need to do more. <laughs> okay. He was, a, he was a molder, you know, he did a lot of clay work. So, you know, I do clay work. I do paintings. I do graphic designs. I do sketches. I do laser. So I do all kinds of things, but I really want to focus on um, religions and, and bringing in the, the spirit of, you know, the Mfumbes and Orisha and the Loa, things like that, and, and what they represent, because that's missing. Okay, cool. So voodoo, because mm -hmm. we're going to talk about voodoo and Ifa. So mm -hmm. okay, what is the difference for you? Um, I mean, I, I know. I know, but there's a lot of people out there that are, uh, that are, want to start this spiritual path. Will you compare voodoo to palo? Oh God, they're and, so different. They're so different. And you know, I never planned to be in all this. I will say that I never, I'm not a shrine seeker or initiation seeker or anything like that. Everything that I've gotten in Ifa, I was like, no, you gotta go. I'm like, Ifa, can I wait? Ifa's like, no, you gotta go now. You you can't you can't you know even with my voodoo initiation, um, which I did in December, um, actually it was in November the day after Thanksgiving. Ifa told me I had to go before the year was over, that I had to go get initiated. So, with me having you know Ifa voodoo and Palo, they're they're so different because the energy of the spirits and the deities is so different, and how they work is are so different. Even the way they communicate, you know, in voodoo there's no divination system. The 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 mambos and um, and guns, we, you know, whoever's gonna do some people use bones, some people use cards. Um, and and it's it's completely different. They work differently, um, the energy's different, you serve them differently. Um, you know, it, the energy and how they work is completely different than Ifa. You know, in Ifa, you know, we have the Orisha, and you know, they're deeply connected to the elements that they use to to do things, you know, like Shango, you know, Oya, Oshun with the waters and the fire and the light and things like that. But in in um in voodoo, which means spirit, that's that's the op that's how they operate. They operate in spirit. And they're um they're you know, different ones, they're cool, they're hot, there's so many different ones. There's Nago, there's Petro, um, there's so many different um, groups, if you will, of of, of Lawa that that we have to serve um, and, and and do that and make sure that we do our service in Voodoo. But they they operate differently, and it's, I see really the distinction whenever I get clients, and I will hear an Orisha stand up for a client versus somebody you know one of the um, my prenders stand up for a client. I hear them talking to me or Lawa saying, "Okay, I'm here." to help this client, maybe because that's the one that walks with them or the ancestral lineage is connected to that particular lineage or something to that effect. But as I get more involved, I see the dynamic of, of how they operate. You know, I would say, honestly, you know, looking at Voodoo and looking at Palo, you know, we have Veves in Voodoo and then we have the Firmas in Palo. Patipembas and uh, the Mangas. Yeah, Patipembas, yes. yes. So, yes. so we have those those two similarities, but you know, in Ifa, you know, we have Olokun, and Olokun has symbols as well. Uh, but she comes from Benin, which is connected to Vudun in that area. So, um, I think they have some similarities as far as some maybe doing some of the spiritual work mm -hmm. um, and doing some of those things. I think in in Vudu and and Palo, honestly. Because you know we 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 draw the symbols and we do the work on the symbols and call forth the spirit. So there's some similarities in that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people um, like to compare and say no, it is the same. But you do know that, and, and like for us, and Brahma con Brahma, we we actually mix a little bit of the hungaro, right, of the Buddha and, and the uh, the practice. Mm -hmm. That that's actually. Uh, our secret of our lineage that a lot of people don't know when we start mixing that um, that voodoo into with palo, um, which is what makes Brahma con Brahma so different. Uh, yeah. Because of some, the, 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 the palo that is practiced in Santiago de Cuba is, is way different. Um, 
Sorry. So it's that magic piece of it, you know, and that's what I love. That's what I love about so much about Paulo is yes. even in voodoo, you know, we have the Gede, which is a whole class of spirits of the dead. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, 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 in Paulo, we have the, you know, we have the Infumbes and the Muertos and things like that. So, you know, it, it kind of has that, like you said, that kind of alignment and, and doing the, the same thing and putting pieces together and working that way. So okay. For sure. um, yeah. Uh, did you practice 21 divisions too? 21 uh, divisiones? No. Because a lot of people nowadays think to practice 21 division. They seem to practice uh, Kimbanda, Umbanda, uh, Kendoble, and all that stuff. Um, no, no. I practice, you know, I, I'm uh, if our boss is, Arumila is my boss, okay? So I practice okay. with, with <laughs> Arumila and my ancestors. So, you know, the, all the paths that I'm on, they have explicitly said, you have to do that. You have to go there. You have to get initiated to that. Or, you know, I got scratched by my Nkisi and then in my readings. Ifa has actually brought up every one of these paths in every one of my in my readings. Right. So let's talk about Isheshe then, because that's what you practice, Isheshe, right? Let's go yeah. with, with, with the questions. Um, I'm just going to do that. So give you the, the whole camera there. And that's the, what's the, the female's role in um, Isheshe? Because now uh, this is something that I, I don't know. So I'm very ignorant when it comes to this traditions. So I'm going to let you go ahead and, and talk. I'm just going to ask questions because in reality, I don't know anything about Ifa and females and Ifa, and especially when it comes to the African, um, the straight African way. <laughs> so what are the, the females? What are they allowed to do? What are they not allowed to do? Because I know in the Afro-Cuban, they're hardly yeah. allowed to do anything. There's right? that limitation. And, There's that limitation. Yeah. Yes. But that's a whole nother discussion. So, <laughs> <laughs> but what I will say is I'm initiated to Umila, to Odokum, to um, who else? Oshun, Egbe, Obatala, right? And we we get the same freedom as anyone else gets. And that's something because they recognize the power of women. You know, they recognize the divine feminine. They honor the Iami and the Iami are the mothers. And they recognize, you know, Oshay Tura. Oshay Tura talks about the power of women. Oshay Tura talks about it. without women, nothing can happen. Nothing can manifest. So they honor that in practice. They understand the power that a woman brings because we have the womb of creation. We have the womb of manifestation. You know, we we are are, are the spiritual people that are, are greatly divinely connected to that realm. And they understand the power of that. They understand, you know, there's an Odu that talks about, Oshay Tura that talks about Oshun. When they came down, um, to create the world. And she's the only female Iramole. And she comes and everyone puts her to the side. She, they're like, go and you go and you make some food for us and you go and you just relax. We don't need you to help. So everyone else that came, that came to get the world ready for um, humanity, they were doing things without her, but nothing would work. Everything was falling. Everything was destroying. Everything was dying. Everything was just not working. It was terrible. So they go back to heaven and they say, they say, Urumila, about not Urumila, but um, <laughs> they go back to heaven and they say, Ulurumari, nothing is working. He said, where is the female that I sent you with? Where is she? And they mm -hmm. said, we didn't need her. She's a woman. We don't need her. We sent her over to do her own thing. So he says, he's angry. He said, what's wrong with you? Without her, nothing will work. Nothing will prosper. That's why everything you do is failing. Nothing is working. They said, you go find her and you apologize. You bow down and do whatever she tells you to do. And you bow down to her. So hmm. they go back and they find her in this lush oasis, you know, because women were like, okay, you don't need me. Okay, fine. I'll go and I'll do my thing but without you, right? So Oshun goes and she does her thing without them and makes her own oasis. They walk up and they realize, oh, everything is beautiful there. The things they, they were trying to make. She has right there, she has the water, she has the flowers, she has an oasis that she's built by herself on her own. So they beg her and they say, please forgive us. And she was thinking about destroying everything because she said, how dare you disrespect me? You know, I'm gonna share this to Oshun too. She said, I dare you disrespect me. I come here to help you. She's the mother of manifestation, the mother of the marketplace, the mother of sweet waters. You know, or yeah, yeah, Oshun. But they beg her and she says, I should destroy everything. And they said, and she was pregnant with child, and they said, she says, if I am going to have a girl 
and the girl comes into this world, I will destroy everything and you will have nothing. So they started conspiring to say, oh my gosh, she is having a girl. What do we do to change this? <laughs> what do we do to change this to a boy? So, you know, they, they talk amongst themselves and they work it out to change her child to a boy. Who is Eshu? We call Eshu. Oshe Tura. Okay. You know, it's Odu that we say. Um, and, and that we all must say, they say, you must say it or nothing will prosper when you do one thing, things in So, you know, we chant that before we do anything. We, that's why we always have to pay homage to Eshu because without Eshu, nothing works. Eshu takes our things to heaven. So they realize the power of woman just in that moment of creation. So, and then the Iami, the females, the great mothers, the elders of the night, Olunamari created them to, to bring balance to the world, to help manage everything in the world. And that's female. So if you go through everything and nothing's working in your life and no prayer's working, one of the things could be the Iami, the great mothers. So in Ifa and the Sheshe, they recognize the power of women and that nothing is born without a woman. Nothing will be successful without a woman. So we get to do everything. We get to sacrifice animals. We get to do divination. We get to, you know, do everything. Um, you know, there's certain things just historically, you know, dancing at Goon Goon, certain things like that, you know, looking at Odoo, things like that, because we have Odoo here in our womb. And doing certain things, you know, at Goon Goon, you know, some things, just because of the energy with that particular deity, that does not go well with that particular female. But as far as practice goes, we have free reign to do everything. And that was something that I had a really hard time coming into Palo of having that limitation and not being able to 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 do things freely in mm -hmm. that regard. Because, you know, we can do it in Voodoo and we could do it in Ifa, in Sheshe. But when it comes to Palo, you know, there's that limitation with women. But we have the right, we can do everything, readings, divination, sacrifice um, that the, any man can do. So it's different, way different than, than Afro-Cuban, Aifa. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at that. Um, they put great power in, into the, the thing, the energy that a woman brings into, into something. Because, you know, we have, we have the Ashe, the afro shade that we're born with in our mouths, and they recognize that too, as well as the energy of the EME that walks with, with, with some of the females and that energy that we bring that, that, that women are born with. Mm, interesting. Because you know um, what they say, for instance, Odu. Odu, you know, it are actually, they're called, it's also the text that we read, it's Odu. And um, there's also a, a, a deity, Orisha Odu, and um, very powerful. She sits, you know, with Orumila, but the words in the Holy Scripts are Odu. And, you know, initiation, men get presented to Odu. And a lot of people think that's sexist, that women don't get presented to Odu, but that's not the reason. The reason we don't need to be presented to Odu is because we carry the Odu within us. Okay. Which is another thing for the womb is is Odu. It's a place where things are born out of darkness. And what is the requirement uh, for females looking at, uh, to be a part of this, uh, to join this? Uh, what What is it that they have to do? Um, what are the first steps? I understand. Um, is to talk to someone, but whatever you can share with us that is over the top, that is not secrets. Um, if somebody came up to you and said, I'm interested in, in this practice and it's a female, what would your recommendation be? Um, I would say, you know, okay, so I was getting ready to say, I would tell the man and the female the same thing, but I'm going to recant that. I would tell the female, first and foremost, to be careful to make sure that you are not going to be encountered by a predator, a spiritual predator, as we know, those are out there and those exist and they target women that are looking to connect. Um, you know, find someone you trust, get background, understand who they are, who their elders are, how they practice, who their clients are, what lineage they practice, everything. Learn everything about the person that they are seeking to uh, connect with in a sheshe. But first and foremost is before anything, get right with the ancestors. Get right with the ancestors to make sure that is the path that you should take. Because I think at this point, there's so many people that are choosing what walk they want to do. And they end up going the wrong path and then they get off their destiny and then they end up having problems 
and not understanding why they have issues in life is because they're on the wrong path of their destiny. You know, just because, you know, I didn't necessarily because of my background and my issues I've had with Paulo, I did not want to go with Paulo, and, but I'm so glad I did. It's such a blessing to my life. But because of my things that happened, but I'm obedient, I'm obedient to spirit. They said, you must get scratched. I said, okay, I will go and get scratched, but people need to make sure that they contact with their ancestors first. Because before any Orisha, any Lawa, any any Prenda, anybody, ancestor always comes first. And people tend to oh, wait. people tend to forget that. People tend to go bypass their bloodline and want to connect to these realms of, of spirituality without considering their their ancestors first and what their ancestor DNA is. That's what I call the ancestral DNA. What's in your bloodline of what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to walk? You know, what did you agree to when you came here? What path you were going to follow? What agreements did your ancestors make with deities? You know, like my ancestors had an agreement with Eshu, right? So what if I would have decided to go somewhere else? Then I would have so many problems in my life. Mm. So I would say, first, get with your ancestors to see what path you are supposed to take. Get whole with your ancestors before you even think about pursuing that. Make sure you're honoring your ancestors, praying to your ancestors, elevating their spirits, getting to know them first and foremost before anything. And once you get right with your ancestors and they guide your path and guide your feet and lead you the right way, and they say, yes, this is the way you should go, then you say, okay, now I want to learn. Then you go through the steps of finding that person you can trust. And a lot of people, they want, they want to go with somebody that's famous. And the people that did me in, that did all this stuff to me, they're very famous people. I'm sure if I said any of the names, you all would know who I was talking about. So you can't go about titles. You can't go about who's famous. You got to go with what your spirit is leading you to do so you don't fall into a trap. You got to listen to what spirit is telling you because I was hard headed. I didn't listen. You have to be obedient and listen to your ancestors and what your 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 ori we call our higher selves, our head is telling us to do. Because then when we don't, we fall into traps and then we want to blame the person. And we got to actually look at ourselves and how we attracted that to ourselves because they look for people that are broken, injured, hurt, mm -hmm. and are hungry, hungry for spirituality. So, you know, it's a dynamic of ancestors first, you know, and there's a lot of things that are going around and people saying, oh, your first year after initiation is rough. And I honestly believe the first year after initiation is rough because people don't get straight with their ancestors first. Exactly. Um, and, and that's what you did. Um, and even in, in, in Malongo, we had to get things right, you know, with our ancestors or Bakulus, uh, before we even start going into, uh, this, this path. Um, so I guess it's very hard. That was a deep, um, what you call it advice you gave about, especially with females um and uh sexual predators out there um yes because a lot of them go through that and not just in that tradition and in, in every uh every practice yes i have so many i have stories i do i have stories but you know to me it's a lesson learned because now if i walk up on somebody i can see that same spirit in that person and i know i'm not going to be hard hit at this time i'm listening i feel it i'm gonna stay away you know mm -hmm. But I think people get so hungry, they don't trust that sixth sense they have within them to trust themselves. But, and you know, even a lot of clients that I have, they are, you know, women, but they're also men who've been hurt in the tradition. But I find it to be the case, the women that are actually going through the issues of um, people taking advantage of them and, um, and trapping them up or giving them things that they shouldn't have, giving things that to curse them. And, and, and that's it. That's a real big issue. And I have a lot of clients that I have to help that go through those types of things where they've either, you know, been put in pots, they got spirits attached to them, you know, they've been cursed, you know, all, all kind of things. Um, oh God, sexual stuff is, is terrible. It's terrible. And, and, and people have to start standing up in the community. You know, um, a client I had, no one wanted to help her because they were afraid because they knew the people that had done these things to her, but nobody would do it. But of course I did, because I'm not scared. But, um, but you know, we have that circumstance too, where you have people that are fearful to help people. 
Yeah, the problem is a, a, a lot of people don't speak up because uh, they're afraid that uh, witchcraft is going to be done to them or they're, um, you know, told or silenced um, because of witchcraft. You know, they think that their godparents are so powerful or those teachers are very powerful. And if they say something, they're going to do uh, something negative or send um, negative energy or witchcraft to them to uh, shut the heck up, you know. But people yeah. should come together and, and speak. I'm not going to ask you about your experience because I could see it in, in your eyes. Um, and I don't want <laughs> to start getting all sad in here because we just oh, no, the no, eyes. No. But, you know, I learned lessons. And you know what? Those people, they can come to me because I'm not scared. You know, I'm here to help people. And, you know, if somebody's doing something wrong, somebody needs to help people. Mm-hmm. But, but no, and I'm saying this here, I learned some lessons. And But you know what? I take responsibility for the things that I went through because I was disobedient. I didn't trust my gut and I didn't listen to my muertos. Hmm. And that's a big problem that a lot of people have, not just the muerto, um, especially in, in, in Malongo and Palo. And it's also not listening, listening to their spiritual teachers because you see the spiritual teachers or the tatas and the yayas, they don't go out looking for you. You came to them, right? I'm not saying you. I'm mm-hmm. talking about the people out there. A lot of people, you come to Tatas and Yayas and you say, I want to get initiated. I want to learn. You are the one that chose those spiritual people. And mm-hmm. that's why we make videos like this. So yeah. you can guys learn a little bit and take a little bit before you guys make a decision uh, or hear stories. So with that said, what was the, the worst thing that you experienced with this um, either practice, <laughs> if you don't mind? Because now we're going to get into the juicy stuff because the time is counting down. We want to get into all that. Ju- now I made her think. I already know the answer, but I'm just like, wow. <laughs> so, you know, I'll tell the story because, you know, maybe my story will help somebody else, right? And I'm a big proponent of telling stories to assist somebody else. Um, and you know, what I, what you see in my eyes is really, it's not hurt. It's not pain. It's something that I am very passionate about because I see it so often and it needs to stop women. There's so many women that have been taken advantage of in this way and it needs to stop and people need to stand up and people need to be called out and they shit needs to be put on the table. Sorry. But I will say, Hmm. Boy, let me see. Not that one. I've had some. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I will say my worst experience is a Padrino uh, trapped the spirit on me because he wanted to be with me and I told him no. Like be with you. He wanted to be with me romantically. Romantically. I was with him for a little bit and then he wanted to. And I was like, no, man, it ain't like that. No, it's not like that. So he trapped um, two spirits of death on me. Hmm. because I wouldn't be with him. So he didn't want me to be with anybody else. That's literally, you know how you watch these movies with these crazy men and they say, you're going to be with me or you're not going to be with nobody, but they end up killing a lady and burying her in a ditch or somewhere, putting in the freezer. <laughs> this is like, that was the spiritual version of that. Oh, so wow. That, and that, that's, yeah. So, so that, and um, that, that was, that was, that I would say that was that was the worst experience. And what has been the like the scariest experience you have had, but with working um, spiritual, like working something, um, doing a belongo, doing an insada, doing a spiritual work, something that has like scared the living crap out of you. I know in Mayombe we see a lot of weird things. People don't understand that until they get deep, deep Ooh, into Palo. They don't understand. Well, I'm going to tell you, so back to my story, and that's one thing I want to say with women, and I have clients all the time, where they, they say, oh, it just takes one time. You know, oh, I'm just going to meet this person one time, just talk to them. That's all it takes. That's all I want to tell anybody, men and women. All it takes is one interaction. People are slick. You can talk to somebody over the phone, right? You can get juju'd over the phone. You get juju face to face. So it doesn't matter how many times you interact with somebody. But I would say, and you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a scary person. It takes a lot of shit to scare me, right? 
So um, I don't scare easily. Um, I could say one of the most unsettling things that I've seen, um, and it was more unsettling than scary, you know, um, I said at this point through everything I've been through, I think I, I'm not a man, but I got balls to steal regardless. <laughs> but I would, I would say is, um, you know, like you said, dealing with clients and dealing with the things they have going on and taking stuff off and people don't understand when we do work, you know, we help the client. They think that, you know, we pay and we, they, we charge them and they pay for certain things, but you know, we have to deal with the um, ramifications of doing work. It's like when we step into the step to help people, we step into the ring with that same person and the things they have going on around them in some situations, right? And a lot of people don't understand, even after we do the work, the things we have to deal with at times, they don't understand that piece of it. The cleaning, the, the, the everything else, cleaning your house, cleaning yourself sometimes for days, or the things that come back to try to get you because you're fighting for that client. So I remember one time there was a spirit that came that I saw and the spirit looked like it was a cross between a man, a snake, and it had the face of some type of monster with teeth and it had a long windy neck and, oh wow, and, um, it was different colors and, um, it was a, it was an evil spirit and it tried to get me. So, um, but of course that didn't happen, but, um, <laughs> but I would say that was probably one of the most unsettling things that I've mm. seen. And I've seen a lot of stuff and I, I've, I've experienced a lot, um, but that's probably one of the most memorable ones, but I got rid of it and went on about it when I never saw it again. And have you gotten possessed or mounted, like we say mounted with the Enfumbe? Oh, with the spirit before, and if you have, can you tell us how you felt? Because a lot of people keep asking. Those are one of the the most common questions. How does it feel when really? you get possessed? How does it feel okay. when the spirit touches you? Do you remember? You know, stuff like that. <laughs> well, well, yes. Um, you know, I do a lot of channeling. Um, you know, being a medium, I do channeling. I'm also um, initiated as a contemple diviner, not contemple the practice, but contemple as far as Burkina Faso by Maladoma Somme. And that divination system is channeling. Mm -hmm. So it's complete channeling of what- So it's not candomblé, it's what? It's contomblé. contomblé. They're elemental spirits. Mm. They're elemental spirits. Actually, oh, Bobatola told me in a dream that I needed to work with them. <laughs> so so it's that, that channeling, you know, with channeling, I would say, um, with channeling, you know, you're part there, part not. And I think you feel differently when you come out of channeling because you remember some things. Um, it's still draining, um, but I don't think not as draining as when you have a full mount. Um, so yes, I've, I've been mounted. The first time I was mounted was probably, wow, maybe 15 years ago, I would say. I was at the beach with one of my friends in Maryland and um, I was thinking about, I don't know if I was thinking about Yemoja or Okun, somebody. And I was out there just praying, doing my spiritual self, being my spiritual self, enjoying the ocean. And all of a sudden, I got mounted. I was mounted for hours, hours. I was speaking in some language. I have no idea what it was. Um, and I came to, it was daylight when I started. After the sun went down, I came back to myself. I didn't remember anything. I did not remember a thing. And she mm -hmm. said I was walking up and down the beach, chanting, speaking in these languages, and you know, <laughs> people just walking by saying amen or something. I don't know, but I was just walking up and down the beach for hours, mounted. Oh, you're lucky they didn't give you an exorcism. <laughs> you know, it's funny. One one of my friends says, What is it that when we go to church? They want to cleanse us. They want to remove those, the spirituality. They want to do an exorcism. But when they come to us, we don't remove Jesus away from them. Yeah. You know, we don't remove the Holy Ghost away from them. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> they want that. I think it's because of the dynamic, you know, I think in, you know, like in um, voodoo, you know, 
they it calls it's it's called like you being ridden it's your how your horse so you know the, it's good you know you know it's it's okay if you get if you get mounted in voodoo and you know in Palo, i haven't seen it as much you know i feel you know some kind of way um with spirit because i'm a mount anyway so you know with, with Palo, I, I feel it it's like strong and um ifa you know we get um we get um we get mounted in ifa as well but one thing i do notice with the dynamic in um in a shed shade which i don't really see in in the other in the latino um aspects of, of um, ifa is mounting when you do it in a shed shade they come and they they don't let they they want to say okay you know they start immediately in some i think paying trying to take it away right um wait, i remember wait, one time so i got uh, real quick city, i was yeah. like leave me alone go away let let ori shana do what he got to do leave me alone <laughs> they, they don't let you mount in the shed shade they, they do here? but okay. they do but from what i've seen is it's like real short-lived it's short-lived um but you know in any other aspect that i've seen in voodoo and and you know it, even in palo and in even lukumi santeria you get mounted and they let the spirit do its work for whatever time the spirit wants to stay right unless they're doing something crazy tearing up stuff or tearing down something beating up people or something like that um or being violent but that's one thing i noticed especially you know going to nigeria because i was initiated in all my initiatives in nigeria is is that being something that's kind of cut off sooner mm -hmm. than I've seen in other aspects and coming out of it you know you're tired um you, you know you don't know some people might pass out um you know it depends if you get if you get mounted by like say you get mounted by egg bed you okay. know you, you might just fall out so it really <laughs> or you know orisha so it's different in how it manifests too depending on who you're getting mounted by if you're getting mounted by egg bay if you get mounted by by Orisha, Obatala, Ifa, whatever the case may be. Um, and in Sheshe, I would say I've been mounted um, by Egbe um, uh, before, um, like fully by Egbe. Um, and I was speaking in other languages. So, I, yeah, I was speaking in, um, in, in Haitian Creole, speaking in, um, in Creole and Dahomean. Um, when I was mounted, um, which, you know, brings in these other aspects of, of my practices and things that I'm initiated to. So you see how everything connects, um, you know, and I tell people all the time, you know, uh, mm. you know, these spirit is universal yes, and they are. We, as, as humans that try to put it in a box and we try to limit, you know, things and how they operate and, and say, oh, no, it can only be this way. It can only be that way. Um, you have to do it like this. I mean, there's protocols, but sometimes, you know, I will bring in other aspects of, of conjure and, and spiritual work or Brugeria, you know, something like that to do work, to get it complete. I may do something with, you know, an Orisha or something like that, but then I bring in other elements that spirit is guiding me to do, to, to, to do it completely. So, you know, people have to stop trying to put spirit in a box. And because when you do that you limit the power of what spirit can do for people and especially when you have clients you don't want to do that because you miss out on so many things and you miss out on clients having a deliverance and you miss out on clients being freed from certain circumstances because i'll have clients that come to me they've been doing things five years one client 10 years they've been trying to get things resolved and nobody was able to help them because they weren't able to see out of that narrow box that they have themselves in sometimes hmm. interesting it's, it's, it seems like you have learned a lot and you walk, you're walking different uh, path of life, different spirituality. You're, you're learning different um, ways. Now, which one is your uh, to go? When you're really in trouble, which one is to go? You know, I don't go? have a to go. I go to where hmm. spirit tells me to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, Interesting. Good, good, they, good, good answer. <laughs> they will, they will, they will speak to me. Honestly, they will speak to me and say, "Hey, you come to me for this," or you know, I will hear them or I will feel them to say, "You come to me for this." Like I have to go to to the, the walk for certain things. Certain things I gotta go see my daddy. I gotta go see Sarah Bonda, you mm -hmm. know, or I may have to go see you know um, 
you know, any anybody else. So it could be, it could be any, it could be anyone, honestly. It really could be. So I just wait, I let spirit guide me. Oh. I let spirit guide me because spirit knows more than we'll ever know. Spirit sees beyond what we could ever see. Oh, so a spirit can look at all the dimensions and everything and how everything is operating. So when they tell me to say, go work with this, sometimes I may have to do work in both paths. They may say, okay, go do this work out here with, with a certain um, Orisha. But then you also need to go and, and do work in Voodoo or in Palo. Yes. So I listen, I listen to spirit and let them be my guide. I love, I love all of them. And I don't love one more than I love the other. Yeah, good, good. Um, did you want to go ahead and, and give your um, information, like your uh, websites, if they want some graphic designs or they want to talk to you or something like that? Uh, is there somewhere where they could reach out to you? Or do you want to show up my Tamba's book? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think I'm going to get a copy. You know, Look, I haven't gotten a copy myself. Oh, well, I guess, I guess. The, she received a phone call and got kicked out. But you can always join back. Just use the same, um, in case you're listening to me, go ahead and just use the same. <laughs> my Tamba did witchcraft. I swear, my Tamba did witchcraft. He's like, oh, you're talking to me. I ain't going to let her talk. And he sent the fulasso up here. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. But if you guys got any questions, feel free to ask them. Um Feel free to comment uh, if you guys have any questions for her. <laughs> I'm telling you, see, Matamba's laughing. He, he freaking did some fulasso. He's like, I ain't going to let her. And that's to show you guys that Paolo works faster than anything. See, Matamba with a little fulasso, boom, got her out. He's like, hell no, hell no, girl. I ain't going to let you talk. <laughs> but you're welcome if, you, if, you, if you're listening to me. Uh, just go ahead and, and, and get back. <laughs> I'm like, uh oh, she got kicked out. Uh oh. <laughs> Let me just add you back here. Uh, I was telling people, Matamba, they brew hate to you. He did witchcraft because uh, we, we were going to talk about his book. And he was like, that, and you said, I haven't received any. I haven't received <laughs> one yet. So I'm like, yep. Yeah. But Tom was like, I ain't gonna let her talk. I'm gonna do some brew hay on her. And then I was like, you see, you see Paolo works faster than anything else. And one food, you know, also. it does. You know, Paolo and, and Voodoo work very fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now she gotta adjust the camera. What happened here? Your computer died. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It's all right. We are almost done here. So, what I was going to say, if you want to give, Give them like your um, Instagram, if, you know, if they're interested in speaking to you, or if there's somebody out there who wants to do some, uh, need some graphic designing. Yes. So, um, so Tata Matamba, you you cut us off. <laughs> yeah, he did, he said he he threw a philosophy <laughs> here. You know, he's like, you know, <laughs> got the bar. <bottom. laughs> Take. He's getting some 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 juju, but um. But yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward to reading the book though. I, I really am. So um, I'm thankful I got to do the design. It was a lot of fun. It was great to work with too. So, um, but they can find me on Facebook um, at Iyaya Shalewa, S A L E W A Abori Shade. You can't type and, that. Oh no, you're not a computer, right? Well, somebody can type it. I have somebody can you know in there that can probably type it up for me. Um, and I'm on Instagram as Priestess dot divine on instagram i am working my youtube i'm actually going to be loading a lot of videos i've done tons of videos that talks about like spirit possession talks about witchcraft talks about um demonic spirits in your house things like that um you know so it talks about a lot of things that are not mainstream on the youtube channel so um that's gonna i have one but i need to put the videos on it's um priestess divine as well um on youtube but yeah, the best way is actually, you know, Facebook. I use Facebook quite a bit. I, I try to stay away from Instagram because I keep getting hacked and people keep stealing my identity. Yeah, that happens a lot. And just don't start talking about Anunnaki's. 
I mean, everybody's <laughs> like, Anunnaki's, Anunnaki's, Anunnaki's. I'm like, what are we talking about Paulo? Let's talk about Paulo. Let's talk about Ifa. Let's talk about all this juicy stuff. But they want to bring the Anunnaki's with stuff. It's, it's, I'm like, that's stuff that you guys should know. Yaya Shaliwa, Abori Shade. And I do custom designs too. If anybody wants, like, say you want to design for your Munatso, your Ile, with your Ile name or you know, we're not so whatever your house, you know, I can do designs and laser it out and make some signs with um, acrylic uh, or wood or stain, you know, anything, um, you know, signage, things like that, you know, things for your shrine rooms, doors, things like that you can put on the doors, say, you know, um, things like that. So, you know, um, you know, really the signage is a good thing too to put, you know, signage, a lot of people have um, different types of um, houses, that have you know spiritual names so doing those things books i really enjoy the books i really like mm -hmm. making those um the book covers so i'm actually getting ready to start working on another one as well um that's my wife by the way the hb one that keeps coming to her so <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, uh, yeah um yeah there you go uh books designs how about those masks behind the mask behind you do you do that too or you you know, I could actually make you that. I could actually make those on my laser machine. I actually I didn't bring any up here, honestly. I could make it on a laser machine. Um, a printer or, or laser like wood? I have a laser. I have a Glowforge laser machine that can laser out anything. I actually have I'm lasered out some um, some different um, firmas, Pati Pimbas, Veves to do spiritual work on. So I do those kind of things too. If somebody makes a custom one that they draw and design and they want to have it lasered on some wood to use in spiritual work without having to, you know, keep creating it. Um, you know, the symbol is what that draws that energy and that spirit. So I, I create those on laser machines too, as well as, um, you know, those types of designs to hang on people's walls. Say you want to make something to protect your house mm -hmm. and you want it lasered out on something, I can do that and design that as well. Or you want to put something, you know, at your gates, at your doorways for protection, you know, um, you know, different things like that can be created in your, on, on your wall. So anything like that, okay. or do some spiritual work for money, um, you know, love, you know, any kind of designs like that I can make. Okay. It's All limitless that. with the limitless laser machine. Because of the laser machine. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make let I'm you getting ready to put some laser designs on my shamalangos. <laughs> they told me to put some designs on my shamalangos, so I'm going to do that this weekend. Okay. Uh, saludos y bendiciones, Mario Rodriguez. He came late today because we're about to, I'm about to let you go. Because I want to do it in about an hour and not keep you things so we could save some more for a next interview if you're interested in, you know, when you're not um, doing that much. And we could come here and now we talk about more about you and get deep into the other stuff. I, I believe I told you that if, if it was if it was OK with you getting more oh, yeah. uh, deeper into the this is just an introduction, like a lot of my the guests that I just introduced them. But that's because I'm thinking of bringing them back here, so now they could tell us more of the juicy stuff. More like, oh, okay, yeah. now Look, we're talking Palo, you. now we're talking Malongo, now we're talking in Kisi. Like anybody that knows me knows I can talk about anything spiritual for hours and hours and hours because you know I love spirit so much, and and I'm I'm nothing without spirit, you know. So. I can talk about anything spiritual forever and ever. And people that, that know me that are on here, they know that. So I'm game. <laughs> okay. Is that your information right there that the young lady put? Did you see it? Is that yours? Let me see. I gotta scroll. Yeah, yeah. Sala, uh, Salawa, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay, yes, so that's, that's that, that information yeah, that's right me there. On so they can find me on Facebook that way. And on, on other social media is Priestess Divine. On my YouTube channel is Priestess Divine. And on Instagram is Priestess Divine. But I do a lot more stuff on. But I'm getting ready to launch the YouTube channel with a lot, a lot of insightful videos and just yeah. really unique topics that people don't talk about. Yes. And that's the reason why I like to do this and introduce people. Um, so it gives them a little bit more of, um, now, I don't want to say courage because I see that you don't like that. Lack, lack of courage but the, the more in, in, um like a push to say start something because we need more information out there now a lot we of do. people talk about this and the people that are talking about have no clue of what they're talking about yes and i'm, yeah, I'm yeah. thankful for that because you're right because i some of these videos i did like last year 
And a room and like keeps saying, hey, you got to put these videos out. But I just have to sit down and go ahead and do it. Um, put some of these videos out there because I've made a lot of videos and I need to put them out there, you know, to educate people on certain things and um, just things that people don't know about. Because I've had a lot of spiritual lessons and experiences in life that things that, you know, you would never think could even happen. So people can get insight into the spiritual realm a little bit more and how things work and move. I understand. Well, anyways, it was a pleasure having you here today. It was. Thank um, you. I'm going to let you go before you, <laughs> what is it? Your phone goes off to, <laughs> and then hey, my, I'll blame, phone I'll, my phone is fully charged. I have my iPad on. That wasn't so charged, but <laughs> and then I'll blame my Tamba for throwing fulasos and stuff. Right? Yeah. That's why it really I'm went out. It wasn't my phone at all. It was Tata Matamba. <laughs> it, it was my Tamba. My Tamba did that fulaso, right? And I'm still, <laughs> my Tamba, I don't care. I'm still waiting for your book, man. You know? Me too. Me too. Or else I'm not going to do a review on the book. I'm like, nah, I ain't going to do a review. Right. I, right. So, and then I'm going to get, a, I'm going to make her, have her make me a special hat that says Tata and Fumbe and then coffee and then bien tomado on it. And I'm going to wear that yes. and I'm going to promote your company. I'm like, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I could do, actually do that on the laser machine. It lasers leather as well. So. Okay. That's good. We'll talk. I, I'm, 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 in, I'm very serious. I want to get something that says coffee with Tata and Fumbe. <laughs> yeah, that would be very good. I'm actually getting ready to start making some, um, some t-shirts as well with my design graphic design i'm going to do more of that you know shirt, shirts for Sheshe, for orisha even impala i have apollo shirts i made you know with veves and mm. you know i'm um, creating my own um designs in 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 palo that represent certain energies um that you can put on a shirt okay well with that said you gave your information and everything and I gotta go wash the dishes and do the laundry. Thank me too. I'm getting ready to do the same. <laughs> I tell you, but my wife gets upset with me. They're like, she's like, they kind of think that I'm mean. I'm like, well, that's my job. I'm telling them that I tell no, them. No, I gotta the go to wash the dishes myself. <laughs> well, uh, a great salam alaikum. And alaikum ma kwenda sara. And can sabe te lo kutara con mucho más si mene mene mene. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You have a great one, ma'am. We'll see so you on the next one. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.